Hello everyone, my name is Rafael and today's video is all about returning a new players. I will try to help you and guide you in what you're supposed to do as soon as you reach level 40 or in case you're a returning player who has no clue what to do because you were gone for so long, I will share some of my thoughts about the best farming methods and the best exotics that you should get as soon as possible because it will help you to actually uh, improve your builds uh, even in earlier in the game but also later in the game. So there will be three different parts in this video. First, we will talk about difficulty and a few tips to make your life easier while you're trying to reach heroic a legendary difficulty. Then we will move on to talk about loot. You will need better loot in order to reach heroic difficulty and legendary difficulty. So in the loot part of the video, I will share with you some of my best methods to farm better gear, at least in my personal opinion. And also I will tell you a few exotics as I already told you that you will need to farm moving on the last part of the video we will talk about the recalibration and optimization state table i will explain to you how they work and why even though you will mostly use them when you reach heroic difficulty when you are at the what we call end game you should start farming resources from them from now because if you don't then when you reach like uh heroic difficulty and you will need to like come up with a build for legendaries you will really struggle if you don't have your recalibration library figured out and if you cannot optimize anything so um because as you can already tell this video is going to be a little longer than most of my videos i will have right now in your screens and in the description time stops for each part of the video so you can go and watch only the part you're interested in and let's get started so here is a graph of enemy's health on each difficulty and the way they scale in groups. So as you can clearly see, when you play solo, enemies have much less health than playing in a group of four, for example. Now I'm saying this because back when the Warlords of New York came out and the max level increased to level 40, the majority of the player base was asking for the difficulty to be nerfed. And back then I was against that suggestion simply because I was playing solo. What I mean by that is that when the patch first dropped, we all had terrible gear. Probably like, probably like all of you watching this video right now, the gear you have when you reach level 40 is pretty bad compared to the gear a player has on heroic difficulty. So when people were joining groups of 4, what they actually did was just play with 3 other people who had as bad gear as them and they just struggled as much. So now, not only they were struggling by themselves, but they were struggling with three other people. And because of that, the NPCs were scaled to a very bigger amount of health and armor, which made their life a lot harder. When instead, if they played as a solo players, they would deal with weaker enemies. Of course, now, if you join a heroic mission, you will probably either get carried or kicked. My suggestion for you would be to just play solo until you reach challenging. And also, you don't need to play in the difficulty you feel comfortable at. What I did back then was as soon as I realized that normal was starting to get comfortable, I immediately changed back to hard difficulty. That made me a lot more careful when I was playing. Uh, it made me think about what I'm going to do next. And also it was punishing sometimes. So back then I changed from normal to hard, for example, or for hard to challenging when I realized that on hard, my gear that I was using was good enough to make me uh, able to like go through control points without struggling much, right? As soon as you realize that what you're doing isn't that challenging anymore, then you need to change. Of course, that means that when you go to the higher difficulty, to challenging or to whatever, then you will struggle a lot more. But that means that you're actually able to complete these missions and to complete those control points. And that will actually give you the better loot. Because if you keep playing on normal forever or, or on hard or on challenging, you will never get the best loot in the game. Your main goal is to reach heroic. It's not an easy goal. It's not something that you will do fast. But if you try to like it's it day by day, try to improve your build. And at some point you realize, you know what, right now on hard, I'm doing OK. Let's move on to challenging, which things are going to be a lot harder. But I want to test it out and see if it works. Then at the end of like a few weeks or a month or depending on how much you play, 
then you will be able to reach heroic pretty easily. Of course, if you're an experienced player, you can do it in a couple of days, but this video is for beginners and for players who haven't played in a long time. Now, as I told you, my suggestion you would be to play solo until you, re until you reach challenging. Why solo, you may ask? Because that way, uh, I think you will have a better experience with the game, getting better gear and seeing your rates and getting better day by day is a very satisfying feeling. At least it was one of my favorite parts of the game back when I was leveling leveling up from normal to heroic if you want to just speed run through that process of going from normal to heroic you can always just join heroic groups and hope that people will carry you because right now heroic group people who are playing on heroic most of them are have decent builds for heroic and they don't struggle so even if you need to be carried i don't think that people will have that much of an issue doing that of course uh, increasing the world difficulty depends on your gear so let's start talking about how you can get better gear so division 2 has a feature called targeted loot if you open up your map and press R you see what each area and each mission has a higher chance to drop so for example if you're looking for an assault rifle you're better off farming areas or missions who have assault rifles as a targeted loot. That doesn't mean that you will only get assault rifles from that area or mission, but that you will get more of them by farming that area than you would do if you farmed something else. Best places to farm, in my opinion, are control points, the summit, and a couple of missions. I will start by talking about the summit since it's also the easier way. Summit, for those of you who don't know what it is, pretty much is a PvE game mode. Summit is a skyscraper of 100 floors. You get to choose the difficulty, and as you progress through each floor, you get more enemies and more bosses, but always in the same difficulty as the floor number 1. So, no matter if you reach floor 90 or floor 1, the enemies will have the same health and armor. What changes is how many red and elite spawn, um, how many enemies spawn in general, uh, the tactics that they're using, there might be like an assault drone a room where you just have to kill down some drones, there might be a boss's room, there might be whatever, but as you're going through the floors, as you get, as you're progressing higher and higher, the, the things get a little bit harder. Every three floors, there's a checkpoint, which means that the next time you log in and decide to go to the summit, you will continue from the last checkpoint you reached. Joining other people's group will also grant you the checkpoint if it's higher than yours. The best thing, however, about the summit is that you decide the targeted loot. So, if you teleport to the summit, open your map and then press R, you get to choose what targeted loot you want it to have. So, that means that summit is also is a great way both for getting better loot but also for leveling up also every three floors you get a chest with loot in order to open the chest you will first need to find a key hidden in the previous three floors so make sure that you check for that as well so that's summit the main reason why i believe it to be one of the best farming methods is because you get to choose the targeted loot as I told you already, but also because it never really ends. It's not like control points you ha which you have to reset every time you complete in order to do again or just wasting time by going to the next one. Summit is 100 floors with never stopping action unless, except, excuse me, those checkpoint floors where you have like uh, a, a few minutes. I mean, when you clear a floor, you can just chill out, go to the bathroom, go get a drink, whatever, right? But as soon as you keep progressing, enemies never stop coming. Now, let's move on to the control points. Before I actually talk about the loot from the control points, it's important to let you guys know that control points have four levels. Depending on what difficulty you're playing, control point levels will change. For example, if you play on normal, control points will be level one. If you play on challenging, control points will be level three. Control points are very important as soon as you reach challenging. The main reason for that is that from level 3 and higher, control points also reward you with a blueprint of a weapon mode or a gear piece that you can craft in the crafting bench. You need to collect all of these blueprints so you can use any weapon mode you want. Weapon mods give you extra bullets, extra critical hit damage, extra critical hit chance, better accuracy, better stability, and so on. So they're very important later on in the game when you're trying to min-max everything. Level 4 control points will also spawn a named enemy. 
th there are two phases for the control points. The first phase is when you try to kill the NPCs that are already in the control point, and the second phase is when you're actually defending the control point from other NPCs that are coming to you. Each phase has one named enemy in level four. Now, let's talk about farming control points. As I already said, control points from level three and higher will be the best to farm. But if you can't because you're playing on hard difficulty, farming them will still be worth it. The main reason for that is that they are fast to complete. They always reward you with a targeted loot piece. And once every 24 hours you get the loot, you get to loot the supply room. The supply room will grant you extra loot, but it can only be opened once every 24 hours. So if you capture a control, if you capture a control point, open the supply room and then reset the control point and capture it again, the supply room will be empty. This, however, is the other great thing about control points. There are a few of them who are very fast to clear and very close to safe houses. So after you clear a control point, you can open your map, press C and reset control points. A loading screen will appear and you will be teleported to the closest safe house. Control points like the World's End and Sleeping Giant are very close to the safe houses and are pretty fast to complete, which means that you can farm them, reset them and go all over again. Even if you don't have the supply room, you will be rewarded by completing it and you will also get loot from killing the NPCs. When it comes to missions, there are a few great missions to farm like Lincoln Memorial for example, is pretty fast to complete. So if the targeted loot that you are looking for is in a mission, then farming missions could be ideal as well, if you want to do something different other than summit and control points. However, in my opinion, missions are much more time consuming and reward you with much less loot than control points or the summit. Um, of course, you can do some missions if you feel like it. Uh, some missions are great to do, but I really find them to be boring and uh, I found myself running for the better part than killing NPCs and getting loot. So that's the main reason why I don't prefer them. So there isn't really a magic trick for better gear. Those are the best methods of farming that I figured out and I've been using since forever. The more you farm, the better gear you get and you can increase the difficulty you're playing on. And as you increase the difficulty you're playing on, you will get better gear. Now, since most of you are either new players or haven't played in a while, I will share with you my favorite exotics and why you should definitely get them as soon as possible. There are quite a few exotics, but only a few of them are really must have for new players. I mean, it's not that if you don't have them, you will not be able to complete any content, but it's that if you have the ones that I'm gonna tell you right now, or at least some of them, uh, you will make your life a lot easier. So let's start. The Memento Backpack is probably the best exotic and you should get it as soon as possible. Just farm for it in the backpack target loot areas and you will get one to drop sooner or later. Keep in mind that exotics drop quite hard, so you will need to farm quite a lot. Now, the reason that Memento Backpack is great because it gives you three core attributes instead of one. It gives you 50% weapon damage, it gives you full armor, it gives you not full but a core attribute with like even up to like 170,000 armor, and it gives you one skill tier as well. Second exotic that we're going to talk about is the Coyote Mask. It's also a must have exotic, gives you a great DPS boost with its talent. Again, it's just farm for it in the targeted loot for masks. It gives you extra critical hit damage, extra critical hit chance, depending on how far you are from the enemy you're shooting at. So you should definitely get it. Lady Death, if you like playing with SMGs, is probably the best SMG at the moment. It's an exotic SMG, which grants you more weapon damage the more you're running around and building stacks. Chameleon is an AR exotic that a lot of people hate, but I still believe that it's one of the best weapons for solo players out there allows you to get huge damage boost but also go for hybrid builds. Capacitor is probably the best assault rifle exotic at the moment. You must have it if you play with skill builds. Check it out, it's crazy. You can get it by farming, not by farming, excuse me, but by, but by completing five challenges, challenges on the summit. So it's pretty easy to get. So you should definitely go and check it out. And the last one that I'm gonna talk about is the Bullet King. Bullet King is an LMG exotic which pretty much never has to be reloaded. You have 1,000 in your ma 1,000 bullets in your magazine, and as soon as you hit 100 bullets to your enemy, you get those 100 bullets back. 
part three of the video of course as i told you is the recalibration and optimization station so this is probably the most complicated part of the video but i will try to make it simple and fast since i have already said 1424 words in this video yes i checked the word count on the script we are like already 15 minutes into the video so i will try to be as fast uh, as possible so what do you need to know Recalibration library is very important while you're trying to go from normal to heroic difficulty. So basically, the recalibration library stores rolls on each piece of gear. So let's say that you get a shotgun with 15% weapons damage as its core attribute, but you don't want to use that shotgun because you don't like it. Instead of actually destroying it, you want to go to your, to your recalibration station, open the recalibration library, click the shotguns category go to core attributes and extract the core attribute of 15 percent weapon damage the item will be destroyed but you will store the core attribute and you will be able to use it on any other shotgun you want without actually expanding it so as soon as you store an attribute on the recalibration library it stays there forever and you can use it as many times as you want so it's very important to gather gear that you will use to fill up your recalibration library so you want to pick up everything and then see if there are any roles you want to store in your in your library. Now, don't think that because you get a role that you're not using at the moment. So let's say you get full armor regeneration on a piece that you want to destroy because you think that you will never use. And armor regeneration is a role that you still, th that you believe at the moment that you will never use it. Don't like deconstruct it. Go in there and put it in your library because you never know when you will actually decide to change your build and what you, you on, and what you might decide to build. So I want to pick up everything and see if there are any roles that you want to store in your library. You can do this with every piece of gear in the game and each type of gear has its own library. So the 15% weapon damage that I store in my library from my shotgun will only be available for me to use on other shotguns. If I wanted to use on my assault rifle, I will first have to find an assault rifle with 15% weapon damage, store the roll into my library and then recalibrate it to the assault rifle I actually want to use. As you can see in the recalibration library, you have the core attributes, the attributes and the talents. So the same goes for talents as well. Of course, that only applies for gear pieces that have talents, weapons, backpacks and chest pieces. Moving on to the recalibration station, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a weapon that you want to increase its weapon damage. As long as you have stored the role you're looking for, then you just go and recalibrate the weapon damage to a better role. However, it is important to know that you can only recalibrate one stat in each piece. So an assault rifle that has two core attributes, one attribute and one talent, can only recalibrate one of those four things. If you decide to recalibrate the talent, then you can change the talent as many times as you want, but you will never be able to recalibrate any of the other roles on it. Last but not least, we have the optimization station. At the moment, we're waiting on a patch to reduce the optimization cost because it's very expensive. So if you see this video before the actual patch that will come out on the 2nd of February, then do not, do not optimize anything yet. So if you open up the optimization station, you see again all the gear type. Let's say you, you choose the backpack, you open it up and you can decide which three of the stats you want to improve. Keep in mind that you should optimize items that are already good and you just want to make them perfect. So as you can see, you have four resources you need to farm for. The first one depends on what type of gear you're trying to optimize. So let's say again, you want to optimize your backpack. You will need to have a specific amount of backpack weave. If instead you want to optimize an assault rifle, you will need to have an assault rifle alloy. The important thing is that you should keep in mind here is that you collect those by destroying other assault rifles and other backpacks or whatever the type of gear it may be. Each piece of gear, depending on what it is, it drops its own alloy or wave. So shotguns so drop shotgun alloy, rifles drop rifle alloy, knee pads drop knee pads weaves. The second type of resources that you will need is the field recon data. You can get those by completing control points, dark zone landmarks and certain floors of the summit. So they are by far the easiest to farm in my opinion since I think they drop for each time you complete a level 4 control point. Also you can get those from your SHD watch in the scavenging section. 
Moving on, we have the faction assessments. Each type of gear has a different type of faction assessment that you need to have in order to optimize it. So for example, the assault rifles and the backpacks need true sense assessments, but SMGs and masks require hyenas assessment. These tactical assessments, as they're called, drop from bosses of their faction, so true sense bosses will drop true sense assessments. Bosses are not the named enemies. Bosses are bounty targets, open world bosses, and mission bosses. I don't think that there are any other bosses. I really don't know why named enemies are not considered bosses, and it's kind of confusing, but that's the way it is at the moment, and hopefully they will change it soon. The last and the hardest to get, in my opinion, are the SHD calibrations. You get those from certain projects, from your SHD watch in the scavenging section, through some caches, and from crafting them in the crafting bands. But at the moment, they are expensive as hell, so it's not easy to get them. You can get all the resources we just talked about by crafting them, but since they're all expensive at the moment, I would suggest you to keep your materi materials for crafting only SHD calibrations. So, if you have everything you need, you can go ahead and optimize your items. However, as your stats get closer to being marked, the cost of the recalibration will be increased. I will not mention any numbers here, since there's a patch coming in a week, in a week that will like reduce the recalibration cost but at the moment just for like 0.4 percent extra weapon damage or whatever you need to farm for more than like five ten hours so at the moment they're very expensive and the closer you get to for, to the rolls being maxed the harder they get when it comes to supplies to resources excuse me so pretty much that's it for this video uh, i will definitely make more guides because i want to talk about more things like the crafting station like dark zone like um how to build right all those things but at the moment uh from what i see over here i have already recording for like 28 minutes i'm guessing the the video at the moment is somewhere around like 22 with all the cuts being put to it and all that kind of stuff so I hope that this is enough for the first part. I hope that I helped some of you guys coming back to the game or just new players and that uh, you found what you came here for. I really appreciate if you would drop a like, subscribe if you enjoyed what you just watched. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye bye.